You're listening to a podcast of Relatively Speaking on MPB Think Radio. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Good morning and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking, the show all about you and your family. And I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Well, summer is almost here and we've had a few very warm days already. And many people for comfort and for the love of entertainment are flocking to the pools, the lakes, ponds and beaches. In the South, being near water is really pretty easy, and it's fun for a lot of us. The water sports, just the coolness, fishing, boating, all of that is so great. But for all of us, it's not always very safe. Upwards of 50% of adults have never learned to swim. So today I want to talk about why you or someone you care about may not have learned how to swim, how it's affected your life and your family's lives, and why maybe you should literally take the plunge to overcome whatever stopped you as a child. And there there are so many reasons out there, and I want to talk about those as we move along in the show. So let's hear what's going on in your life, and please join us early whenever you're ready to start talking. You can share your comments and experiences with us this morning by calling one eight seven seven mpb ring That's one eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. or you can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. So um, Michelle and I were planning, good morning, Michelle. Happy to have you here with me today. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Well, when Michelle and I were talking about what we wanted to do today for this show, I always like to do one on water safety. And particularly, I think it's so very interesting that there are so many adults in, in the South, across the South, in the United States who never learned to swim. And many of us have been near bodies of water all of our lives. And so what's going on there? Why is that? Well, this weekend, I was down on the Alabama Gulf Coast on Dolphin Island, and um, a tragic incident happened. Uh, My husband and I were sitting on the porch, and we noticed that um, there was some flurry on the beach and flashing lights, and it looked like the Coast Guard or Um, some authority was out there, and um, I later found out that a young adult um, was suspected of drowning, a young man um, who was was in the water, was there, um, and um, they couldn't, he went down in the water and they couldn't find him. Um, it made me cry because, once again, another incident of somebody on the beach um, there to have a grand time with friends and loved ones, and it turned into tragedy. And so um, it just came to me that we have got to do something about this, Um The word was, and I don't know anything about the individual except he was a young man who was in college. And I will say that um, I'm hoping we get some positive news that he was found alive, but but odds are not so much that that will happen. And um, I I just wondered um, how I heard that he could not swim. His friend said he could not swim. And so I wondered um, why he was out in the waves um, not knowing how to swim. And I will say, um, on our Gulf Coast, if many of you have been there, I hope. If you haven't, you should be because it's a beautiful coastal area. And I've always said it's it's a gem that so many people don't know about. 
Um, but um, during rough weather in this weekend, it was stormy and, and rainy for a bit. And when it wasn't rainy and the sun was out, the waves were pretty, pretty immense for the Gulf Coast. And I think people underestimate the pull of what can happen even in shallow water. So um, I'm thinking if this show can help us talk through how we can get adults and children um, and even older adults to understand the need to learn what they need to do to not be fearful of the water but to have a healthy respect, how if they fall into a body of deep water, how they can save themselves, even if they don't want to be proficient swimmers, um, how important that it is that they do that. And I know um, sometime on um, Southern Remedy on the children and teens, you'll hear from um, that show about water safety for children. But I want to make sure everybody understands that upwards of 50% of adults are not proficient in water safety. So we've got to do something about that. The Center for Disease Control says that 10 people drown in this country every single day. Every day. The risk for minorities is higher. 60% of Hispanic kids, 70% of African American kids cannot swim. Now, there are probably some likely reasons out there, and we'll talk about the, that as we move through. And I'd like to hear from you as to what your thoughts are. Why do you think the incident incidence is higher? Um, you know, again, like I said, water's lovely. I love the water. I love to swim. Always have. But I grew up in a swimming family. My father was a big proponent of the American Red Cross. Um, I took lessons from the time I can remember. Um, I was never a, a racer, but always loved the water and always a, a pretty proficient swimmer. And so guess what I did? All my kids learned to swim because I love the water. I was comfortable in it. So if you were one of those individuals like me, where you had parents who were into the water sports and swimming, then then you learned to swim. If you didn't have a parent, I'm curious, did you have parents who didn't swim and did you learn anyway? How did that happen? How did they make sure that you became a swimmer? Um, or did they uh, show fear of the water and it was imparted onto you? Not to blame parents, but just to say Whatever we model, we talk about that on this show all the time. It's just general behavioral medicine. You do what was modeled to you. You become the kind of parent your parents were unless somebody teaches you differently. You learn the love of music. You love learn the love of dancing. Um, you even decide whether or not, perhaps, that... Uh, what profession you'll go into because of your parents. So I'd like to talk through this as we we move along. Um, I, as I was preparing for the show, I um, noticed that back a couple of years ago, I think it was in 2019, John Legend um, was interviewed by the BBC, and he he had tweeted because he had tweeted about taking swimming lessons um, as an adult, and he he noted that his two young children were also taking swimming lessons, and they were ahead of him. And so BBC, a British broadcasting company, um, interviewed him about that, and he talked um, about how how he had never learned to swim, uh, had never been comfortable, always was fearful of the water, and how he was moving through it. And I thought it was um, wonderful that he allowed himself to be interviewed about this, something that made him look maybe a little vulnerable and, and maybe um, to some might be embarrassing. But... Um, the fact is, is that there are a whole lot of people out there who don't. 
um, don't swim, don't have good water safety skills, and even if they don't care about the water and care to swim, if they get caught into a situation where they are in a body of water and and um, need to save themselves, cannot. So um, just one more little statistic I will give you. Um, an average of about 3,500 um, individuals in the U.S. drown every year. And in children um, 1 to 14, it is the leading cause of death. Accidental deaths are the leading cause of deaths. And in that, um, drownings are are um, at the top. So what we are going to do today is talk about some of the myths and and um, truths about swimming or not swimming. And um, I want to talk about some of the ways that you can help yourself overcome your fear. And I am excited to tell you that after we go to our first break, Uh, We have a guest visitor, uh, a dear friend of mine, and many of you know her, Rita Brent, will be calling in to talk to us a little bit about her her experience as uh, becoming an adult swimmer. So join the conversation. Join us, please, at 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-672. 7464, or you can send that email to family at mpbonline.org. We are talking about water safety swimming. Um, Did you learn how to swim? If not, why not? Um, Do you think you could do it as an adult? This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. We're talking about all of that. Give us a call. We'll be right back. The entire foundation of your child's brain is being built in the first five years of life. This construction is strengthened through the child's interactions with others. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. The good news is you have what it takes to be a brain builder. Learn more at MississippiThrive.com. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Michelle McAdoo, and we are talking about swimming. Did you learn how? Did you learn water safety when you were young? If not, why not? Have you tried to impart that to your children? Um, Do you have a fear of water that you just can't overcome? Let's talk about it. Let's hear from you and see maybe how we can help. Give us a call, 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. All right. Um, Well, we have several callers on the line, and we have Rita Brent, who is with us. So um, let's bring Rita in just to welcome her. And um, Rita, I'm going to just say thanks for being with us. Thanks for calling in. I know you are in Atlanta and a busy woman doing a lot (laughs) of your comedy stuff and everything. Yes, but I hope to get to do some swimming now. My apartment complex has a pool, so we're going to see what happens. <laughs> Yay. Well, okay. Uh, we have a full board of callers, Rita. I want to just get you to say maybe a couple of words about how you came to become a swimmer. Talk to us just for a minute, and then we'll get to our callers. Well, my mom started me off with swimming lessons at the Baptist Fitness Center in Jackson, Mississippi, when I was a child. And to be honest, I never finished learning how to swim. So I know how to do the strokes. I can get from one end 
of the pool to the other. But when it gets to treading water, that's when I have a fear and I struggle there. And I was uh, on on the path to getting back to the swimming. Uh, you had hooked me up with a, a wonderful swim teacher. But at this point, I'm just afraid of the deep water in particular. And there are so many things that come along with that. I think there are some generational fears that have been passed down. My mom does not know how to swim. My grandmother does not know how to swim. Now for her, my grandmother, that may be different because we know back in the day, waters were segregated and they would put acid in the pools when black people would try to swim. So it may be a different reason for my grandmother, but for sure that generational fear uh, has been passed down. Wow. Um, yeah, acid in the pools. Now, I never heard of that. Mm-hmm. I know that there were issues in the South, mm-hmm. certainly the segregation. I think certainly the fear of the water can be passed down. Um, and so I, I, I just think that the other issue was just the general lack of opportunity um, mm-hmm. due to segregation. There were so many individuals who never had pools for them. So as mm-hmm. we're moving along, I know you have a short window, Sharita, um, but I want to go ahead and get to some callers. I hope you can hang on for just a few minutes and maybe come yes. in as we're moving along. So. Okay. Let's get on to our first caller. We have um, Jamie in Leesdale. Um Jamie, thanks for calling in. Hey, Dr. Butchers uh, and, and Rita there. A little personal information. The young man in, uh, that um, they have not found yet that I know of in uh, Dolphin Island was a Mississippi resident and a Lucky Day scholar at the University of Southern Mississippi. Oh, my uh, goodness. St- started with my son there, well, good friends. Uh, in fact, they, they uh, swam together in their in my son's apartment swimming pool, kind of helping uh, the young man. And I guess uh, overconfident, maybe uh, peer pressure, whatever. But it's Rita, I think, touched on the, the, the point there. It's a generational thing, uh, minorities, uh, lack of opportunity. I don't know. Uh, that's in the past, but we need to really focus on the present and and helping people that need help. And so, uh, anyway, kind of sad day yesterday for our family and our son and his uh, the Lucky Day Scholars at Southern Miss. And so, just just uh, letting you know and and uh, think about the family and and the you know the help that we can offer in Mississippi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jamie. Um, yeah, uh, that's what I had heard that he was, he was a, a great young man and, and, um, sad to, sad to hear about it. So I agree. We do need to move forward, but what we do, what, what is clear to me is that because of the general generational issues, Rita, like you were mm-hmm. saying, um, you know, grandmother, mother, um, and then you trying to learn, but with a mother who really was not able to support you in the water, probably, um, mm-hmm. even though she was trying, um, makes it more difficult. So so we need to kind of have that village help everybody, don't you think? Yes, and also realize that it's never too late. I think Absolutely. some people get to a certain age, they think, well, I, maybe I don't need to know how to swim. And that's not true because even when I'm on a cruise, I'm a little bit uncomfortable because I'm like, if something happens, I know I'll have the life jacket, but it would be so much better if I knew how to swim. So just for an overall confidence and to have those life-saving skills, I think would be helpful. And to also have an understanding of the water because some people are afraid of sharks and, and whales and alligators. But once you, the more you learn, I think the the less afraid you'll be. Right. Well, I see, um, Vivian, you had to drop off the line. Come back if you can. Um, we'd love to hear from you. So let's go to Sue next. Hi, Sue. Good morning. I'd like to ask you a question. Used to, on, there were certain television shows where you could see uh, infants being taught to swim, and they just seemed like they took naturally to the water infants and little toddlers Mm -hmm. and i'm wondering uh, once a child grows and starts to mature do did they keep those skills to swim or did they have to like relearn things i I just wondered did that did that skill stay with them or did did it change as they grew older yeah 
Well, that's a good question. I'm I'm glad, Sue, you brought up infants uh, because I want to make a couple of comments. Yes, early on, you can you can teach an infant um, how to float and and how to sort of dog paddle um, and go underwater. There's a natural diving reflex that human beings have to hold their water once they are hold their breath once they're put underwater. Um, The American Academy of Pediatrics came out with a statement a few years ago about the fact that um, really uh, teaching a child to swim very early on, like under the age of four, sometimes gives you a false sense of security about their ability to really save themselves. Um, For some very young children, it's hard for them to be able to flip over on their back, which is one of those life-saving things when you fall in the water to learn to flip over on your back and float is really important. Um, Even if you're not a strong swimmer, if you know how to do that, uh, you can save yourself for quite a while in the water. And so... um, to that that yes you can you can teach a toddler but to make sure that they continue to learn the skills that they need for true water safety um, those swim lessons need to continue four is probably the age in which it is the best to start enrolling children i know in in the south a lot of parents start earlier and the children do great at two and three and four Um, the reminder that I would give is just because they look like they're good swimmer doesn't mean that you should have any less vigilance when you have a toddler um, near the water they should always always have adults with eagle eyes on them because it only takes a few seconds um for for something to happen. So, Sue, I'm glad you called in about that to, to let me make that statement about toddlers. But thank you. Thank you. So, Rita, let's yes. let's talk a little bit more about the the water safety issue before we go to our next break. Um, why did you find that it was necessary for you to maybe move forward? You mentioned something that I, I thought was a very good point that you made is even when you're not in a pool, if you're on a boat, if you're fishing, if you're on a pleasure um, boat just on a lake, um there's no guarantee that something won't happen and you'll end up in the water, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I decided that I needed to pick back up swimming just be- for a sense of peace um, because I've been in so many situations where people are fraternizing and those people who don't know how to swim will just be compelled to get in the water and we've seen accidents happen but I just wanted to make sure that I have the actual skill to swim if I'm going to keep putting myself in those situations and to make myself available to help somebody else if need be because just like children and toddlers need supervision some adults need supervision as well because there's that peer pressure where they'll just push you in the pool I think my mom had an experience like that somebody pushed her in the pool when she was young and it it made her never want to swim again yeah so for me I just wanted a sense of peace yeah yeah I think and and the other issue you brought something up that we need to talk about is is trying to help others so many times individuals will drown trying to help someone else because a panicked person in the water um, has unusual strength and um, even if you're a strong swimmer somebody can pull you under so to to mm-hmm. know what is the right thing to do when you see somebody struggling in the water and it's typically not the right thing to do to swim over to them and try to help them but to find a life preserver to find a a water a life ring to find a stick to find a rope something that you can throw to them to get them to catch on to and hang on to um Many times, though, um, when drowning doesn't, it's not always obvious that somebody's struggling. Um, Mm. They're not screaming, help, 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 I'm drowning. Typically, they're bobbing around and you can't tell what's going on. So that's why it's so important to stay vigilant and know what's going on. 
Um, but yeah, you're mm-hmm. absolutely right. Let's go back to the phones. We have Angela in Mobile. Um, hi, Angela. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, I just kind of had a comment. Um, when I was young, I guess my dad was old school. He had me jump in a pool and um, didn't catch me because I guess he thought that um, I would swim. I was really young. It's like one of my earliest memories. And him and my mom had a huge fight. And for years, I was afraid to learn how to swim. But yet I enjoy the water and boating and things of that nature. So maybe five years ago, I just said to myself, you know, one day I want to be able to go scuba diving. And I started looking for swim classes. And to my surprise, it was really hard to find adult swim classes. So I just wanted to kind of comment on that because there are people who may want to learn how to swim and be taught by a professional, but there are just really limited resources for adults. Um, do you guys have any information on adults learning how to swim? I I have some, yes, Angela, and that's a that's an excellent comment because you're correct. So many times, um, first of all, I would just like to say I know that that there were even some swim teachers back in the old days who thought just throwing kids in and seeing if they could swim to the side was a great way to go. But honestly, I think that. Um, caused many water water phobias that <laughs> that was did not serve people well. So that is not the way to do it. Teaching um, water comfort is probably the first thing you can do so an individual doesn't panic when water splashes in their face or when they uh, go underwater. But but teaching comfort on what to do and how to manage it is the best thing you can do. Now, to you, to your adult question, quickly, the American Red Cross, great place. They continue to do a lot of good work in the area of swimming. There are adult teachers, I know, in the Jackson metropolitan area um, who, who do that. And, Angela, I think it just varies greatly depending on where you are. You're in the Mobile area, so I would certainly think that there is someone. I would call the American Red Cross, and then I would Google it to, to just see because there are individuals out there. And there may be a person who teaches young children at particular schools schools, but may uh, be willing to teach you as an individual privately. Um, But um, I will see if I can find anything, Angela, um, in the Mobile area, If and we'll put it on the podcast. Um, Michelle tells me we'll make sure to do that if we find it, okay? Okay, thank you. I really appreciate that, because I did Google adult swim classes, and it was giving me stuff like Planet Fitness, and I did get a couple of wives, but they only taught children, so I would definitely appreciate that information. We will see what we can do for you, Angela. Thanks for calling about that. Well, I know we need to go to our next break, and I need to let Rita Brent go. She's got another call that she's got to take, and um, Rita, yes. thanks so much for calling. Thank you. And I I just want to remind my fellow black women sisters that swimming caps do exist because a lot of us won't get in the water because we want to mess up our hair. So just grab some swimming caps and some goggles and just go ahead and get on out there. (laughs) Absolutely. That's right. There are some pretty cute swimming caps now. And goggles are actually recommended by most when you're starting um, your early swimming Uh, because so many times not being able to see in the water is frightening for some. So, um, Rita, two really good tips. (laughs) Thank you again for joining us. And I just want to give Rita Brent a plug. She is a fabulous comedian. So if you ever have an opportunity to listen to her, um, Google her, and you will find out more. All right. Thanks, Rita. Thanks, Um, Doc. All right, Uh, this is Relatively Speaking. Today we're talking about swimming and water safety and why, if you didn't, why you never learned to swim. 
call, by the way, if you have some tips on where people can go in your area for adult swim lessons. Um, because that is, it's never too late to swim. Give us a call. Join the conversation at one eight seven seven mpb ring That's one eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Or you can email to family at mpbonline.org. When we come back, we'll talk about myths and truths in swimming. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. Children are excited to show you all the new things they learn to do, like taking first steps or waving hello and goodbye. Positive responses like waving, clapping, and smiling back are fun ways to promote their social and emotional development. Milestone checklists can help mark these moments and help you know when to give extra support. More information at MississippiThrive.com. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking, and I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Michelle McAdoo. Today we're talking about um, how many adults do not swim, how many adults do not have water safety, and how important it is that we make sure that all of us, even even if we don't care about being a star water skier or anything like that, uh, why it's important to at least know the basics of what to do and, and life-saving facts. So, all right. Well, let's go back to the phones. We have Rachel in Eupora. Hi, Rachel. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us. So, um... I wanted to say that I think that one of the things we should, uh, what you, one of the things that young people should bear in mind is don't panic. If you find yourself in a situation and you begin to panic, you're going to uh, just make things worse. When I was about in the ninth grade, I was at a uh, cow pond with a friend and I did not know how to swim, and I walked out and slipped into the deep water, and the water went over my head, but I did not panic. I propelled myself underneath the water. I parted the water with my arms, and I paddled my legs under the water until I could step on the ground again. And that's how I managed not to turn that into a horrific uh, tragedy. Wow. Wow. Rachel, it sounds like you kept your wits about you. Um, and and that is one thing that's so important, to not panic. That is great advice. The same thing happens if you get caught in a wave, like I mentioned earlier, even relatively small, um, even when you're in shallow um, areas on the beach, if you get caught in a wave and it drags you under, it can have some pretty incredible force. And if you try to pan, if you panic and you try to fight it, then um, you will not win. But if you learn to keep your wits about you to go with the flow of the water and swim with the sort um, not against it but vertical um, to it um, a horizontal to the wave I'm having my directions mixed up um, you can swim out of it so kind of go with the flow go with the wave do not swim against it swim with it and you'll come out the other side so it's really important to not panic so Rachel thank you for that story that sounds like it was probably terrifying but you came out of it okay it really wasn't I, I knew that I wasn't going to drown I made up my mind that I'm, I can do this and I just propelled underneath the water held my breath there you go <clears throat> well glad uh, you're here with us still so thanks for that call 
for your show. Oh, thank, thank you. you. All right, staying on the phones, let's go to Ann in Tupelo. Hi, Ann. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. Um, thank you. Oh, so good. Um, I'm calling. I have a couple of tips. Uh, so I think in teaching children how to swim, their biggest fear is just like you say, you watch kids even try to take a bath and they scream because they don't want water in their face. So right. at our house, um, just to save time, we basically... The first, you know, my husband would get in a shower and shower, and then he'd come out, and I'd get in a shower, and then we'd start passing the babies through the, you know, it was a circular thing. <laughs> but you just held them like a chicken and turned them upside down, and you didn't you didn't make a big deal of the water getting in their face. And so they never, from the get-go, I mean, as soon as their cord came off, that's when they went to the shower. <laughs> and um, they just never were afraid of the water being in their face. And so... The other thing I tell parents is, too, to get in the pool and play with their children. Even I'm like you. I'm not really a big proponent of little bitty babies learning how to swim. I think they hold their breath too long sometimes when they go underwater. But um, getting them comfortable around the water so that when they do go to a swimming instructor, they're not fearful of the water. Um, in Tupelo, you can go to the Tupelo Aquatic Center to learn how to swim as an adult, and they have a lot of resources. We actually did teach a couple of classes um, for adults. We had we asked for people who did not know how to swim and were fearful of the water, and we found one adult, and we, we were in water that was about waist deep in our smaller pool, and each adult had another adult so they had one-on-one -on -one, you know instruction or just and some people just to get them down the little ramp to get them to walk it was like an olympic swimmer you know what i'm saying i mean just sure was, that was such a feat for them to overcome but if somebody will be gentle with them and just let them build up that confidence they can you know learn how to swim and the other thing when we got the pool in tupelo built because the city built it we promised the city that we would teach first and second graders how to swim. And so um, the first graders come, I might, I might get this wrong, the first graders come at the end, second semester of first grade, and then they come back first semester of second grade. So they have a little bit of water introduction in first grade. It's still not enough to, to me to really learn how to swim fully, but some of them do. Some of them really do. Um, so they come that first semester, um, second semester of first grade they have this summer if their parents get them if they're able to get them around water that's extremely helpful and then when they come back they're they've advanced some and they get more skills than in second grade so um i think just any place that you are that you have a pool you know even if you don't have a city that has a pool maybe there's you know the college has a pool or there's some pool and you could go to somebody and plead with them just to say look we've got some adults in town can we find some other adults that can help them just become more comfortable in the water? And uh, anyway, that's my suggestion. So, I mean, yes, on the on the um, drowning thing, my dad used to tell us in the waves, if you get out in the water and you get knocked down, you get knocked down, he would just say, get in the glide position. He didn't even try to say which way the water was going. When you're explaining, he said, if you'll just not panic. And I almost drowned in Miami in third grade. And yeah. I, was, I, I could feel myself sinking. I was going... I couldn't get up. I struggled. And then I heard my dad's voice just saying, get in your glide position. Yeah. Just gently kick your feet and hold your breath and you're going to come up. And I did. Yeah. So, yeah, not pa I panicked first, but, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I heard his voice before I lost it completely. Wow. <laughs> so, and anyway, so those are just a couple of ideas. And, um, yeah, and then join <laughs> Master Swim Team once you once you learn how to swim and, and swim three times a week with your local master's group. <laughs> That's wonderful. And thank you. Tupelo has some really great stuff going on, and I hope other cities around will will take example. Um, but what a wonderful thing to have is the aquatic center there and the, yeah. the adult swim lessons. So thank you for bringing that out. And, and hey, um, listeners, if any of you have uh, cities that have similar Please call in. Let's advertise that. I'd love to love to hear more about what's going on at one eight seven seven MPB ring eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Or if you send an email to family at mpbonline dot org with the resources, we'll put it on our podcast so that you can listen to the entire show and get that. So, thank you for that, Anne. You're welcome. See you. Bye -bye. All right. Um, okay, let's go to Bob in Natchez. Hey, Bob, thanks for hanging on there. Good morning. Uh, just a couple of very quick comments. Uh, I grew up in Minnesota decades ago, and uh, you could not get past the ninth grade unless you had a beginner's swimming certificate. 
because uh, there are 10,000 lakes in Minnesota, technically 14,500 over two acres. So uh, they have a close to a 100% uh, capability for swimming. Wow. And just a reminder to your folks, uh, the average uh, time that it takes a person to drown is between 45 and 60 seconds. So you've got to be focused at all times. And generally, it's not the splashing. It can just be an absolute wide-eyed uh, terror. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you don't realize, like the previous example, that that person is drowning. And I strongly urge people not to jump in. Always make sure that there's a pole long enough to reach to the pool or middle of the pool. You poke it in their chest once or twice in a state of panic. It takes once or twice before they will grab that pole, and then you just pull them in. Because a terrified swimmer can be very strong. Mm-hmm. And if you're not an experienced swimmer or lifeguard, it's not a good thing to do. And one last thing, most importantly, I think about 20 years ago, there was a new technique. They called it drown proofing. And you can take an infant and teach that infant in a very short period of time how to roll over on their back. Mm -hmm. They generally have enough buoyancy. I've had an experience where a toddler fell over in eight inches of water with his face underwater and the mother was reading a book. And that child would have drowned had not a lifeguard been there. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you encourage all grandparents and parents to bring these youngest infants in. And I think it's a Red Cross course, just called Drown Proofing, where they can very easily teach that child how to roll over on its back so it will not drown. So those are my comments. All all excellent comments, Bob. And I just... uh... I'll repeat the the drown proofing though of course we would never expect that it was a 100% that that roll over technique for children and adults infants um all the way up to adulthood is a great technique and now from what I've seen, though I don't teach swim lessons, from what I've seen um, as watching them, that's where they start. They teach that rollover. As soon as they teach you water comfort, being okay with splashing water in your face, being okay with having your face in the water, then teaching that rollover technique because it truly can be life-saving. And to repeat one more time what Bob said about don't jump in to try to save somebody, um, the best thing you can do, unless it's a tiny child and you know you can handle them, um, but even even a nine-year-old can drag you under if, if you don't know how to do true life-saving. The better thing to do is to have a pole, a stick, something long enough to reach into the pool and do exactly what Bob said. Poke them, um, get them, try to get them to grab it. And um, and then um, I will say one other thing um, that I want to make sure we emphasize before we get to any any further summary. And and that is, um, you mentioned, Bob, uh, the mother with the toddler who almost drowned just in a little bit of water because mother was distracted. I will say when I was, um, when I had um, my youngest son um, and we were at our pool at a birthday party and I was standing there by my child And he slipped into the water. He was a toddler and not a swimmer yet. Slipped into the water. And and, um, I had my eyes off him for 30 seconds, honestly. And that's when it happened. Now, of course, we were able to pull him out. But it takes just a few seconds. So please make sure that this summer we have fewer tragedies than ever. Bob, thank you for all of that great information. That was, I wish, I wish we had a a gate like that, like in Minnesota, where, where everybody has to learn to swim. That would be awesome. It would be awesome. All right. Love your show. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate you lots. Keep. All All right. Well, we went through so much of what, what I wanted to do today, let me um, let me give you a couple of other quick facts. Um, one, 
the myth is that adults don't need swim aids or accessories. Even if you are a strong swimmer, when you are out on a boat, when you are out on a lake, when you are skiing, you must always wear a swim jacket because you never know a life jacket. You never know if perhaps you're going to get knocked out. You don't know if something's going to happen, that you are stunned, or if something happens. So a life jacket on a boat it can be an amazing lifesaver. Keep that in mind. You might need a swim age. Just because you're a conditioned athlete doesn't mean that you're going to always immediately be an excellent swimmer. So give yourself a break and take some lessons if you feel like you're not as water safe. Swimming is not intuitive. It's not for everybody. You need to learn the proper strokes and techniques. So get some help as you can. And and then the final thing I want to say is it's truly never too late. Um Get out there. You'll enjoy the summer and the water sports so much better if you are not continually worrying about what's going on and whether or not water is going to be at a point that scares you. So if you have any other tips that you want to add to the show, please send them in to family at mpbonline.org. We'll put them on that podcast. And if you'd like to hear the show again or any past episodes, you can listen to the podcast on your favorite podcast app or searching Southern Remedy, Relatively Speaking. This show is a production of MPB Think Radio and engineered by Michelle McAdoo. And I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. I hope you'll join us next Tuesday at 11 for Relatively Speaking and that you'll stay tuned for NPR's Here and Now, coming up next on MPB Think Radio.